Hello, potential amateur radio operators of all types. Now we're on safety, safety, more safety. Which of the following is a safety hazard of a 12 volt storage battery? And the correct answer is shorting the terminals can cause burns, fire, or an explosion. So if you're carrying around a 12 volt battery that, that can deliver plenty of current, make sure nothing metal can fall on it. And don't, don't even think about shorting it yourself. <laughs> Not a good idea. What health hazard is presented by electrical current flowing through the body? All these choices are correct. It can cause heating of the tissue. It may disrupt the electrical functions of cells, including your heart. And it may cause involuntary muscle contractions. And the other thing that comes along with letter C is the fact that if you're on a ladder and you have involuntary muscle contractions, you got something else coming, and that's the ground. Gravity is going to get you, so you need to be safe. In the United States, what circuit does black wire insulation indicate in a three-wire 120-volt cable? The correct answer is hot, and that is assuming that your location is National Electric Code compliant. If it is an old, old building, you might want to check it before you go toying around with it. What is the purpose of a fuse in an electrical circuit? That is to remove power in the case of overload. Now, we're not talking about you physically going and removing the fuse out of its holder. We're talking about the fuse blowing. If that fuse has an overload or senses an overload, it's going to remove power by breaking contact. It's sort of like a switch. And when it removes power, you need to figure out what caused the overload. If it's running the bathroom heater and the blow dryer at the same time, you pretty much know what it is. Go flip the breaker. Why should a 5 ampere fuse never be replaced with a 20 ampere fuse? Well, you're quadrupling the amount of current that could possibly flow, and it was most likely that system was only designed for 5 amperes max. So excessive current could cause a fire. The wires will get hot, and the next thing you know, boom, you lost your vehicle or whatever you may be using at the time. What is a good way to guard against electrical shock at your station? Again, all these choices are correct. Use three wire cords and plugs for all AC powered equipment. That means that it has the, the, the actual ground. It has the hot, the neutral, and the ground. Connect all AC powered station equipment to a common safety ground. And now that is something that you need to do with your station is have a safety ground. That's not a RF bond, that's a safety ground. So that way if something were to short on the inside of your equipment, it goes to ground and trips your breaker. Install mechanical interlocks in high voltage circuits. So a mechanical interlock is some kind of lock that you can put into either the the breaker box in my shack i actually have something that i can pull out of the breaker uh, it's not even a breaker box it's a, a, di a manual disconnect as long as i'm holding that and in possession of that nobody can plug it in so that keeps me safe if i need to work on the electrical system inside my shack so question number seven where should a lightning arrestor be installed in a coaxial feed line? You do not want one of these inside of your house. On a grounded panel near where the feed lines enter the building is the correct answer. That's outside. You want the lightning arrestor outside. Question 8. Where should a fuse or circuit breaker be installed in a 120 volt AC power circuit? And that is in series with the hot conductor only. So go check out your breaker box. You'll notice that that fuse or that circuit breaker is only on the hot line. The neutral is run to a common bus bar. Question nine, what should be done to all external ground rods or earth connections? Bond them together with heavy wire or conductive strap. And if you're doing an outside 
ground rod to ground your station, you have to ground them all and then bond them to your home service. Question 10. What hazard is caused by charging or discharging a battery too quickly? That is overheating or outgassing. Every battery has specs set for how you're going to charge it. What hazard exists in a power supply immediately after turning it off? When you turn off a power supply, there's going to be some filter capacitors on the inside that are going to still have some voltage. And if you go digging in it, you might find out. So charge stored in filter capacitors is the hazard. And the last question, which of the following precautions should be taken when measuring high voltages with a voltmeter? You need to ensure that the voltmeter and leads are rated for use at the voltages measured. So out of, the, out of these answers, the voltmeter and the leads need to be rated for use at those voltages. Don't go using one of those cheap little $5 meters to measure a 480 volt system. You'll be sorely disappointed. This is Rob, W1RCP. Have a good one, 73.